Hey guys, Necropolis League is almost here, and instead of trying to rush out a trash league starter for you guys, I figured I would try and show you how I manage to play any trash skill that I want at league start by copying builds off of PoE Ninja. This is something that I've been doing for a very long time. I don't do it every single league, but whenever I feel like playing a particular skill, and when I do some quick Google searching, I don't find results, I don't find any build guides for that skill that are uh, currently relevant, then it falls upon me to actually try and and figure it out for myself. Now, thankfully, I'm able to use PoE Ninja and just look at what's out there, what has been done before, and then take those builds as inspiration. This is something that I do because I don't really like following meta league starters. I understand that they're very powerful, but I feel like they're incredibly restrictive as well, and I think that this is something that GGG kind of fails at in terms of balancing. I think all skills should just be relatively balanced. Uh, throughout a character's progression, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a casual player after all. To get things started, I recommend looking at solo self-found builds for inspiration. This is because solo self-found builds don't require specific uniques to get going, and because of that, you'll have a much easier time copying them. Even if you are playing in trade, I still recommend starting by looking out at SSF builds for inspiration, and then once you've kind of figured out what people are doing in SSF, you could then go take a look on the trade league and sort of see see what uniques are really good for the build and maybe give you a little bit more direction with where to take the build further. Also, I do want to advise you about this. This is not aimed at brand new players. If Necropolis is your first league, I think a lot of the information in this video is just going to go right over your head and uh, that's not helpful for you. So instead, if you are a new player, I recommend that you try and find an actual build guide that you can then follow or just play the game, try and learn it as you go, figure things out by yourself, which can be very intimidating, but it can also be a great experience. One website that I think is very useful for new players that are trying to make builds themselves is called poetips.com. Just poetips.com, I'll leave a link in the description. They've got a lot of uh, useful information in terms of what the different terms mean and like what you should be looking for in defense and offense and that kind of stuff. So it just gives you a little bit of direction when you're coming up with builds by yourself. With that being said, if you're a new player, you've been warned. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up PoE Ninja. Now, PoE Ninja is a website that tracks a lot of things. First of all, it tracks a bunch of um, currency values and item values throughout a league. That's not the part that we're interested in today. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking over here on builds. So this brings us to a, a list of 97,000 builds that have been played in the Affliction League. To begin with, what I'm interested in is actually not this Affliction League because, I, like I mentioned earlier, I'm actually more interested in the solo cell phone. So, where it says League here, you click down on the drop down menu and you click on SSF Affliction. All right, so now we have way less characters, um, a much smaller sample size, much smaller data, but this is the data that is more useful for a League Start scenario. To make things even more precise and more relevant to a League Start scenario, what I like to do is I like to click on this time machine thing here. Instead of it being latest snapshot, I go down all the way to like day three. This is a snapshot of all of the builds that were on this ladder on day three of the League. What to do next? Well. This is where you have to have a skill in mind. So if you don't have a skill in mind, I recommend just going in game, talking to Lily Roth, buying some skill gems and trying them out just to see how they feel. Alternatively, you can just look up at a bunch of YouTube videos and find skills that look interesting to you. So one thing to note here is transfigured gems are a thing now and transfigured gems are sort of alternate versions of your regular skills. This video isn't really aimed at helping you find your transfigured gems, though the way you would go about doing that, especially if you're in solo self found, is hopping into the labyrinth, preferably in merciless labyrinth, and then completing the lab. And then once you get to the define font, you actually go and try and hope for um, converting one of your skill gems into the one you're looking for. This can take a very long time to do, especially if you're in solo cell found. So know that if you are specifically trying to target a transfigured gem, you might be in for a bit of a grind just before you even get going. This video isn't really aimed at making that any easier. Instead, it's more about how do you build around any skill gem that you want. For me, I'm considering playing Summon Skeletons. I haven't played Summon Skeletons, I think, ever. The last time I played a Necromancer that was actually a minion build was, oh shoot, that was like probably seven or eight years ago. It was back in hardcore. Fun fact, my character is actually still alive. I got to level 92 and then never played it again. So, uh, Summon Skeletons. So what I'm just gonna do right here, type in Summon Skeletons. 
And here we go. So we have summon skeletons, we have summon skeletons of mages, and then there's this one of archers, and then we have the Val. I'm just gonna click on regular summon skeletons. That's what I'm interested in. Maybe I'll convert over to summon skeletons of mages or whatever if I find that, but for now, I'm just looking for regular. Now that Summon Skeletons is selected, and I've removed this filter here, we can see that there aren't that many characters that are playing Summon Skeletons. That's okay. Um, this is what we're gonna use as our inspiration. In editing, I just realized a pretty big mistake I made when I was searching for Summon Skeleton builds, um, in SSF particularly, and that is this one right here. So I'm gonna uncheck Summon Skeletons here. I'm gonna go back to day three. So what I did wrong, I clicked on Summon Skeletons here, that's fine. The problem was looking at it in five links. The reason this is a problem is that on day three in Solo Cell Found, not everyone is on a five link yet. Uh, what I should have done is gone here. You can see the, the, the difference, oops, the, the difference is massive. There are 10% more people doing Summon Skeletons that aren't on five links yet than there are on people on five links. Should have just clicked on Summon Skeletons down here where it says all skills instead of main skills. And just like that, we now have 122 characters to look at instead of the what was it, like seven that we had before? Now, granted, a lot of these might just have some skeleton just in there anywhere just to like level it up or try and get skeleton mages um, on the divine font. However, uh, what we can do is then uh, click on necromancers and uh, there's a good chance that most of these people are gonna be doing summon skeletons. Hopefully I can edit this in in a smooth way uh, that makes it not too interruptive. So, you can tell that there are not a lot of people that are high level. That is unfortunate, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. So one thing that I would do here, I look at the life totals. I look at the energy shield totals. I look at the levels. This guy here, 1,400 life. That's not enough for me. I need more life than that to have a good time. Same with this guy here. So I'm looking, probably I'm going to look at either this guy or maybe the guardian, but I've been thinking I want to do a necromancer anyways, so I'm kind of not really interested in the guardian. So 77, 3,500 life. Let's Let's see what he's got. I'm going to click on him. First thing to note, he has no uniques equipped here and no unique jewels and no jewels whatsoever actually, which is fine. That's great. That means that this guy has done all of this content on very generic basic gear. Let's have a look at what the passive tree looks like. First things first, this guy is, has not done the Eternal Labyrinth yet. You can tell by looking at this right here. Um, also, I think you can click on this here and get an easier depiction of it. Here we go. Whoa. Okay, it takes a little while to load. Um, so you can see which ascendancy points he has gone for. And then you have an actual look at the skill tree that he has. This looks perfectly fine. He's got some life. He's got a lot of the minion wheels. That makes sense because it's a summon skeleton build. Another minion wheel. Um, you can see what masteries he's... Oh no, you can't see what masteries he's selected on this website. That's kind of strange. That's a little bit of a bug, I guess. But you can see the masteries over here through this list on PoE Ninja. So that can be helpful. Now let's just take a quick look at the gear, see if there's anything nuts. So he's got a basic minion wand that has, um, minions have accuracy, minions have increased attack speed, and minions have increased damage. That makes sense, it's very simple. He's got life and resistances, life, um, minion resistances, minion life, minion damage, a little bit of life, a little bit of resistance. This is basically, he, he got a five link, so he's happy with just any stats on there at all, right? Belt, life, resistances, Life, resistances, a bit of strength, because he probably needed strength. Movement, speed, life, a little bit of resistance. Some dexterity, he might have needed dexterity as well. Very, very basic gear, which is perfect. That's what we're looking for. We're not trying to make this OP crazy build. I just want something that I can play, that I can progress at my own pace and just have fun with. All right, so the next thing would be to go look at the skill gems that he's got. And we can see that he's got summon skeletons in a five link. Now this one, you can tell that it's not the mage one because uh, if it was, instead of it saying summons three skeleton warriors, it would say summons three uh, skeleton mages. So this is the melee one, which is what I'm looking for because I don't want to have to deal with farming the labyrinth for hours. Uh, although I might do it anyways, we'll see. For context, I will be playing in a sort of pseudo SSF uh, group found type of league. So it is going to be a slower pace. I'm not in a rush to try and pump out the vines uh, out my butt, right? It's just going to be a good time just relaxing, just progressing at my own pace and at the pace of the others in the group. Summon skellies, minion damage, added fire, multi-strike, fresh meat. Great. 
that seems simple enough. So he's got zombies, he's got skeletons. And then here we have all of the auras he's got. I don't know if he has them all on at the same time. We're gonna pop into POB in a little bit and we're gonna take a look at that. Uh, also summon skitter, skitterbots. Uh, flame dash for movement, carrion golem, and punishment, convocation, flesh offering. Okay, so punishment is a curse. Flesh offering is a little buff that um, applies to the minions and potentially himself if he has the right. Yeah, your offering skills also affect you. So this uh, ascendancy node. And then convocation is just like this ability that makes all the skeletons blink right up to you in case um, they've fallen behind. So this is basically very simple, and I think that this is something that I might copy in this upcoming leak. Now, uh, what you can do to see how the progression continued is instead of looking at day three, we can click over here, we can look at day four. The gear looks like he's wearing the exact same gear. Is he this? He's the same level. Okay, maybe he did not play on day four. Let's take a look. Let's just keep looking. Hopefully he has actually continued to play this build. 77 still. Okay, that is unfortunate. All right, so this build was abandoned at level 77. Not a great example of being able to showcase how the progression works. That's too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back here. On day one, you can see like what he started with. He got to level 71 on day one, and then day two made a bit more progress. Actually, he was at the point that we were at on day two already, and he just gave up on the build right then and there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to day three, we're gonna go back to search, and we can look at somebody else's. Let's look at this one down here, another one that has a reasonable amount of life. All right, level 74, Necromancer. This guy only has two ascendancy points, interesting. Uh, he found a six link, so that's kind of cool. Uh, he's got melee splash in there, and instead of doing added fire, he's got something else. He's also got raised specters. One thing we can't tell is which specters he's been using. That's the kind of thing that you'll have to do a little bit of Google searching to find out what works really well. Personally, I have no idea what works well for specters. This guy has still remained relevant throughout the whole um, league. So I'm assuming that this guy probably got pretty high level. So we're at day three. Let's take a little bit of a jump to day five. All right, only level 78, but he got a new ascendancy point. This guy's skill gems look more or less the same. Let's try and find a little bit more of a jump, maybe week two, level 89, all right. So here the gear has changed drastically. His wand, he's got an unveiled stat on there to automatically trigger bone offering, so he doesn't have to worry about that pressing that himself. He got summoned skeletons of mages, so he swapped over to that, that's okay. He's got his four ascendancy points. So this is like a good example of something to follow potentially, especially as we go further, is he gonna keep going higher level? Week three, he's level 91. Week four, 92. You can see now that he's added some jewels to his build. Let's just jump all the way to week 10. 98, okay, so he just really kept going and kept going and kept going, that's super cool. Is he still doing summon skeletons? Yes, he is. So this is a great example of a character that went all the way. He ended up with 4K life, max resistances, even chaos res, that's great. He found an ashes of the stars, that's very lucky, but he probably farmed it out. So this is really good. This is a great example of something that you can follow because now you can tell that there are a lot of gear choices and gear upgrades to look for. You can see he's got implicits on his gear. He's got plus one to level of all minion skill gems, a cluster jewel even. So that's very useful. I'm probably gonna follow after this guy rather than the other person. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to day one of this character, level 39. Perfect, this is great because now we have a bit of a leveling example here and then we're gonna just go ahead and like copy this into path of building and have several versions and we can just look at them and compare and have a good time if you do not have path of building you're gonna want it go ahead and download it I'll leave a link in the description for you to just click on it and you can just go ahead and download it so path of building is this tool right here and it lets you plan out builds ahead of time Pee Wee ninja has a thing where you can just click open in path of building open right away you'll note that this is an older tree version may not be compatible blah 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 blah. you could try converting it to 3.24 i'm just going to leave it in case it would break it one thing to note if a skill has been nerfed in this upcoming necropolis league then it's not on me that you don't know that and they're the only way to know that is to go ahead and look at the patch notes or to follow other content creators and look at what they have to say about the patch notes basically if a skill that you're interested in has been nerfed and you're not aware of that and you try and leak start it and it turns out it's terrible, I can't help you there. You, know, you should have done a little bit of research, unfortunately. I wish that that wasn't the case, but it is what it is. Now that we have this open, we can actually interact with this here and we can see that he has made some interesting choices. For example, opting to go off to the side right away 
as opposed to trying to get these minion nodes here. Personally, knowing that I am going to be playing this build for a while, I would have started here, gone here, grabbed the minion nodes, then path over here, and then drop this. Doing this thing here, this little shortcut, is great for saving points in the end game. Early on, having, you know, 20 extra intelligence on a witch is not useful at all. Um, that's just a personal preference thing though. As far as knowing where to go first, when you're leveling, my recommendation is to make sure that you're grabbing life wheels. So in this case, there's life here, there's life here, and there's life here. If I know I need to get this node here, and then maybe these nodes here, I actually would probably prioritize going this way, grabbing this, going here, grabbing the life, and then probably getting these nodes here for the extra minion life and uh, minion damage, right? Yeah, attack speed. Then you could path your way over here, and do that. So one thing you can do is you can copy this tree. So you click manage trees, then you do this, and then you copy low level. All right, so now we open the low level, done. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snipe that off there. So now I have two different versions of this tree. So I have my starting version, low level, and then I have the more advanced level version over here. Next, what we can do is hop back on PoA Ninja, and now I'll go to day two. So he went from level, what was it, 37 or something like that to 65 in a day, that's awesome. Now we can do open in path of building again. So at this point, what else has he gotten? He's traveled further down here to grab these uh, minion nodes here and he's starting to get the life wheel here. So we can tell that this is the last thing he's been doing because it's unfinished. He grabbed all of this here. So these are great minion nodes to have and then more life. And he also uh, grabbed this stuff here and this stuff here. So maximum number of golems. So this is where he has carrion golem, I believe, right? Oh, he's got carrion golem and a stone golem at this point. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so he wants to have one of each. So basically, you just look at this. I know that this is the last thing that he went for because he hasn't finished it yet. So probably what I would do at this point, once I'm like level 40 or whatever it was, I'd come here, grab this, grab this, then maybe get these golem node here, then get this node here, and finally finish up this area here. So how do you know what to prioritize? Basically it comes down to experience. Um, when you're in game and you're playing and you're feeling squishy, one thing that you can start doing on your passageway is look around for life. If I feel like I'm not dealing enough damage, then one thing I will go in game, I will look in my passageway and I will prioritize, okay, how can I scale my damage? If you're doing a skeleton build like I am planning on doing here, then you look at the, uh, the tags, spell minion duration. So we're looking on POB, Path of Building, we're looking for anything that has minion. So basically all of these are minion nodes, and then specifically we're looking for damage, so attack speed, um, just outright damage. Uh, cast speed I guess would be useful if we had the mage version of the skill already. Accuracy, accuracy is important for minions so they hit. You can see there's also another wheel here. Maybe I would come and grab this later on. Yeah, so you just do a little bit of searching. So you can sort of figure out what it is that you need. If you need life, well, that's a little bit more daunting because there's life everywhere. Can we do this maximum life? It's a little bit better. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, there's like stuff of, about maximum life all over the place. So it's up to you to kind of just mouse over them and figure out where the closest life nodes are to where you are in the passageway at whatever point you are in in your progression. As far as configuration goes, this is a bit trickier. One thing that you can do to make things pretty simple is uncheck everything. If you uncheck everything, then whatever damage amount you see here, let's select summon skeletons. Relatively accurate. I guess minions aren't even really supported that well, are they? Summon skeletons, I think we have like six, seven skeletons. Um, in, Enable in full DPS. How's our mana? Okay, so as you can tell, our mana right here, it unreserved 0% minus four. So this means that we actually, like whatever he has here, this person playing has too much mana reserved. So you would either drop hatred or clarity or maybe precision, determination, something like that. You'd have to drop one of them to be able to actually use all of 
the rest of your skills. Okay, so something else that um, I mentioned could be helpful at this point is to then go look at trade and see what people are doing in trade. This will give you a bit of a direction in terms of what uniques might, you might want to hunt for. There are just more people playing trade, so you get a lot more results. So let's go into Affliction. It already keeps the Summon Skeletons down, and it also already keeps the Day 3 down. I can tell that there are a lot of people that are actually very squishy. I guess it's okay to be squishy on this build for some reason. Maybe my gap in knowledge in terms of uh, playing summoners is very apparent to some of you. I don't know that you can play super squishy. To me, that seems like 1,900 life. That seems incredibly low uh, for endgame, but this guy's level 95 and he's pulling it off. You can see right here a list of very popular uniques that are used across many of these builds. Triad Grip being the most common one. So if I click on Triad Grip here, it's only going to show me builds that have Triad Grip included. If you wanted to, for example, exempt all of these builds, you could then click on this little cancel symbol here. And now all of these builds do not have triad grip. This is really useful for refining your search. Let's put it back though. Uh, let's just take a look at necromancers. So I'm going to get rid of the guardians by just clicking on the necromancers. And now I want to find something that has a reasonable amount of life again. 4,000 seems reasonable to me. What does triad grip bring us? Well, basically it lets you convert a lot of the physical damage of your skeletons to cold uh, by having lots of green sockets. So that's something that in SSF I could try and farm and like hope to get and then build around that. But it's not guaranteed, right? Darkness and Throne. This is another uh, belt that can be very useful for minion builds because you can then put in two ghastly eye jewels that will give um, double the stats that they normally would. And uh, that can be super useful. Tabula Rasa. So this guy just has a basic Tabula Rasa for a six link. That's something that you can try and hope to get by just playing the game a whole bunch and then build around that. Rumi's Concoction for block, that's also a nice flask. You could try and get that through bestiary potentially. So this just gives you a little bit of direction in terms of where you might want to take the build later on, um, especially if you are in trade league. Uh, you can also then go on different days. Well, I guess this guy, what did he do? Did he delete his character on day five? Potentially. Not a great example once again. This doesn't usually happen. Let's look at these like squishy guys. Why are they so squishy? Because they're magic finding. Anyways, I feel like this video is dragging out. The idea here is that you choose a skill that you want to play. You then look on Pui Ninja to see what people have done with that skill, specifically in Solo Self Found. One thing to note, if you are trying to do specifically a transfigured gem, rather than go back to like day three or whatever, you can look further in week five potentially and then scroll through this list or just type it in the search filter uh, find one because suddenly like you know five weeks in there are a lot more people that have transfigured gems than there were on day three so let's say if you want to do summon skeletons of archers now we have a much bigger sample size of people you can also do this with just the regular summon skeletons now instead of it being like the 10 people that we had on day three we have 30 something people on day five there's a much bigger sample size however these guys are gonna have better gear because most likely these are bills that have been funded by having other uh uniques drop and they were like oh let me go ahead and play this build now that I found this. I think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to talk about here. This can be applied to pretty much any build. The results will vary. I'm not promising that you'll have a smooth progression while playing. I'm not promising that the build is going to be super fun. What I am promising is that you'll be playing the skill that you want to play. Also, a side note, it's always a good idea to do some Googling of the skill that you have in mind. If you were planning on playing Summon Skeletons, absolutely Google Summon Skeletons build 3.24 or whatever the patch is currently, and then see if people have already made builds about it because if they have then what's the point in doing all of this work right you could just follow a build that is actually established that is actually something reputable from a good creator and you'll have a much smoother progression than if you're just trying to sort of figure things out kind of on your own but also while copying another build but yeah that's just a little side note. Also, this is a fun thing that you can do. If you are copying someone specifically, like for example, Zookeeper Delilah, what you can do is once the league has started and you're playing the build, you can add this person on your friends list by just copying this name here, add the friends list. And uh, unless they've deleted the character, then it should work. And from there, just a little note uh, in game, and I write uh, Zookeeper Delilah or like Necromancer that I'm copying type of thing. And then when I see them pop online, I message them in game and I ask questions. I say, hey, I'm copying your summon skeleton build. Do you have any pointers? Do you have any advice? Every time I have done this, the person has been incredibly helpful, super nice, and more than willing to go out of their way to help me out. So it's just a cool little thing. You make new friends and uh, 
you learn about your build and you progress a lot faster that way because you learn about the pitfalls that they ran into uh, before you do, hopefully. All right, that's it. This is a little bit of a different type of video than I usually do. If this was helpful, please give the video a like and subscribe for more Path of Exile videos in the future. I hope you have fun in the Acropolis League and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.